Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our cool nifty new study guides not here on YouTube. Click the link right up here at any time during this video. All right guys, let's begin. John is a 49 year old male presenting with a temperature of 101.8, complaining of chest pain, weight loss, petechiae, and splinter hemorrhages in the fingernails. Upon auscultation, the nurse finds crackles in the lungs and a heart murmur. The patient reports to have had strep throat about two weeks ago. OMG, what could it be? And what is the first thing you would do as the nurse? Today we're wrapping up infective endocarditis. What happens when the heart starts growing mold, AKA bacterial vegetation on the valves inside the heart itself? Ah! Ah, gross. So the fancy medical definition of endocarditis, endo means internal, card means heart, and itis means inflammation. So put it together, inflammation of the inner lying of the heart, mainly the chambers and the valves. Now we have two types of endocarditis, both infective and non-infective. Infective just means that it's caused by bacteria or fungi, and non-infective means that it's not caused by bacteria or fungi. Now whatever the cause, the inflammation is more common on the left side of the heart, where the aortic and mitral valve are, aka the bicuspid valve. So what's really going on in the body? Well, as you guys know, the heart has three main layers, kind of like a ham sandwich. The epicardium is the outer layer that protects the heart. The myocardium is the muscle layer inside the heart that helps the heart pump. And the endocardium is the inner layer of the heart where the blood gets pushed around. And this inside layer is what really gets inflamed during endocarditis. Now, as you guys know, we have two types of endocarditis, both infective and non-infective. Now, patients can suffer from autoimmune diseases like lupus, which the body attacks itself and attacks those inner layers of the heart. Now, this is not caused by an infection, but the most common type that's tested on in both the NCLEX and nursing exams is infective endocarditis, which is caused by bacteria and fungi. Now, the most common infections are from the evil double S's, the staph and the strep infection. Now, staph is the number one offender here, but also strep throat infections, you know, the kind that everyone gets in the throat every single year. Guys, if you don't treat those with antibiotics, that strep infection can get into the bloodstream and cause endocarditis and even infect the lungs, causing pneumonia and then death. This is actually how the guy who created the Muppet Show died. You know, Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy and the gang, yeah. Mr. Jim Henson died at age 53 from ignoring strep throat infection that spread to the lungs causing pneumonia which eventually killed him. So guys, strep throat is nothing to mess around with and it must be treated. Now infective endocarditis is not only caused by throat infections. This strep or staph infection can also enter the bloodstream from many other ports of entry either from dirty needles or even dental procedures. Either way, the little bugs enter the bloodstream and find their way to the heart, where they nestle into small cracks in and around damaged heart tissues, and even around newly placed valves, where the tissues are still healing after surgery. Once they locate an opening, the germs set up a nice little home for themselves, most commonly on the left side of the heart, in the mitral valve and the aortic valve. This little party grows little by little into a big rager, eventually clogging the valve doors in the heart, which impairs the pumping action. This impaired pumping can be heard in a weird little swooshing heart sound that sounds a lot like this. Now this eventually leads to a less forceful contraction in the heart, meaning less oxygen-rich blood being pumped out to the body. And guys, again, less cardiac output means less oxygen to the body. Now guys, before you try to memorize all those signs and symptoms, always recall in your mind the pathophysiology first. It makes everything a whole lot simpler. All right, so what's really going on? Well, infectious vegetation starts growing on the heart valves, right? And this makes it hard for the heart to keep a tight seal and pump correctly. This leads to low cardiac output, causing low oxygen to the body, and in severe cases, it can lead to heart failure, failure for the heart to pump. So we use the acronym CLOT, C-L-O-T. The C stands for clots in the heart and body, either from the swirling of blood in the inflamed heart, or even breaking off of moldy vegetation from the valve. Now the L can stand for lung fluid hurt as crackles, and also a large spleen called splenomegalia. Guys, just think a mega spleen the swelling of the spleen caused by all the WBCs, white blood cells. Our white blood cells are the defense army that are fighting the infection. And since the spleen is the house for the white blood cell army, well, during times of infection is like during times of war. The spleen beefs up and holds more troops. O is for overheating, so guys, any spike in temperature known as a fever. 
the body's fighting an infection here with infective endocarditis. And lastly, T is for too little oxygen from too little cardiac output, or basically too little blood coming out of the heart, oxygenating the body. And speaking of low oxygen to the body, we get a whole laundry list of complications from this low oxygen, like fatigue, pain in the chest when breathing, even clubbing of the fingers, which looks like rounded fingernail beds from long-term hypoxia. Also anorexia, weight loss, and even petechiae, those little red bumps that gather on the skin in response to low oxygen. Now the signs and symptoms that are unique to endocarditis. Guys, I would really stress these and write these down for your exams. These are the four classic signs and symptoms of infective endocarditis. Huge test tips here. And they're all caused by this moldy vegetation infecting the heart. First is splinter hemorrhages, which are the little clots of mold that break off from the heart valves and end up underneath the fingernail beds. So remember, splinter hemorrhages are like splinter clots that get stuck underneath the fingers. Test tip number two is Roth spots in the eye, known as retinal hemorrhages. It's from the body's immune response to the infection. So correlate the R in Roth to the R in retina. To remember, it's an I for a retinal hemorrhage. Next is Osler's nodes. Now, these painful red raised lesions are found on the hands and feet and again are an immune response. The body is trying to fight the infection here. So guys, for Osler's nodes, remember Ozzy Osbourne, the guitar player who has tattoos all over his hands. Now, our last and most unique sign of infective endocarditis that usually shows up on tests is called a Jane's Way lesion. Now these guys are flat circular lesions on the palms and soles of the feet, and they kind of look like burn marks. So I remember Jane Way rhymes with ashtray, like someone's been putting out cigarettes on the palms and the soles of the feet. Okay, that being said, for your test, the biggest complications to monitor for will always be the deadliest complications. Now the most deadly complication here is a stroke caused by a piece of mold that breaks off from that valve and now clogs the arteries of the brain. Now a fancier term for this is embolic CVA. So one of the first signs to monitor for is a change in LOC, this change in level of consciousness. So guys, if you ever get a test question that talks about confusion, agitation, or even slurred speech, or even weakness, then one of the last signs of a stroke is like this facial drooping. Now these are the first signs of low oxygen to the brain, any type of mental status change. Now the three big causes for infective endocarditis, these guys always show up on exam. So we always start with IV drugs. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. Alright guys, see you next time.